All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. We, we left off, we were doing half of this uh, hot pass. We're going to do this hot pass, and we're going to switch over to stick and uh, go ahead and weld this thing out with stick in the 5G position. Uh, before we get started, let's go ahead and say a prayer. Lord, I pray you bless this time of instruction and, and you bless this place and, you know, you just help us through these times, these hard times that we're in right now, Lord, and um, I just thank you for everything you've done for me. In your name we pray, amen. Can y'all hear me right now when I'm talking under my hood? Do what? All right, so the... So basically this hot pass, it's a, I use it for the cleaning effect. A lot of times on your tacks, you'll have a pinhole. And when you go over the tacks, you'll see something pop out. That's a good thing. That means you got it out. I don't try to add a whole lot of wire and I like using a 332 filler wire, 70S2. That's it for the hot pass. Now we're going to move on to stick. We got some giveaways uh, at the end. We're going to tell you how to get a giveaway. We're going to do some giveaways on some custom leather handles. You know, you can get whatever picture you want on it. And it laces up over your handle. And then also some custom tungsten 50 cal tungsten holder and same thing you can get it's customizable you can get whatever photo whatever you want on it we'll put on there all right I'm just switching the polarity right now I'm gonna turn it up to uh, stiff I usually turn it to stiff on my fills and then I'll turn it down to soft on my cap if I'm close to the machine. About 125, we'll see how that runs. Uh, I'm gonna go about 110. The what? The welder. What do you mean? How much does the welder cost? Oh. Johnny and Scott. Maybe the. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> Hey, I'm gonna need another. Where's my red? Where's my wooden handle? 
it's not holding the I've been welding with 532s and it's wore this thing out. It won't hold a 332 right now. Sorry guys, give me one second. How's everybody doing today? They doing y'all doing good? Nobody's got the coronavirus yet? I'm gonna need, tell him to go bring me one of those orange leads that's long. Okay. This ain't gonna reach. Right. Well, we thought we had it all set up, but. Let's see. All right, for the mere uh, fact of the sparks, I'm probably just gonna weld the top half and then flip the pipe around uh, on this one. So this is my old wooden handled stinger. It will arc off, you know. Cool breeze said hello. What's up? Yeah, I, I'm uh, having some trouble here. See, it will arc off. All right, well, let's go over this 7018. So a lot, of, most of the time on a smaller pipe, you're gonna use this 7018, 332. This is the Excalibur. And then, you know, in the field, most everything is running 5G or 2G. So, yeah, we'll get into that later. On this one, I'm just gonna run some weave passes up to the top, I'm gonna overlap. We'll roll the pipe over just for filming right now. Uh, later on, once we get a better camera, we can get up underneath. I guess we can go, we can get up underneath, huh? National champion high school student is watching, don't let him down. Who is that? Uh, Jamie Hoffman. I hear you. Hook it up right there. In that bag right there, there's an arm pad too. If you want to throw it over here. I guess we'll, we can go from the bottom. I ain't scared. I'm just scared of messing up and then everybody's gonna say, man, look at that. All right, y'all ready? So a most of the time, a lot of people will get porosity in their starts. And what I tell people to do is lay the rod right here and then drag it back and strike up. Striking up and starting are two different things. So you're going to strike up above where you're going to weld to, and you're going to drag it back down to where you want it to start. So you're going to strike up, drag it back down, start here, and then come up and around. That way you're going back over your start. And if there was any porosity, you'll burn it out. Does that make sense? All right, let's try this. Alex said, what's up, Drew? I need to get it turned down. It's a little hot. About 95 now. Uh, yeah, somebody wants to know the uh, benefits of both stiff and soft. Stiff or soft and stiff. Voltage. One of them is going to be more penetrating. One of them, the soft is going to be more spreading out. All right, you ready? Let's do this again. Whoa.
He's making what? <clears throat> Joint. All right, you ready? Yes, sir. Where's my helper at? Where's Travis when you need him? This is this is where the wire wheel comes in real handy. Watch your eyes. can't rotate the phone I don't think uh, if you start rotating the phone it's gonna stay upside down I think is that right yeah. this one's almost wore out too all right let me show you guys a trick I tell all the students when they're first starting out on a stick I tell them to take the rod right here to about halfway. Break it, this flux off right here. And then you got two good sides to go. You take your clines and you clip it right here at the edge where you normally grab it. And then you got a good starting point on both ends. Then you can cut it in half. And you just made two half rods. Gives you a lot more control when you're first starting out, especially on a super coupon. You can, you know, that's the whole pass almost all the way up to the top on a little pipe. So, I definitely recommend if you're a beginner to start cutting your wire in half or your rods in half. It gives you a lot more steady control. So, just a little tip. We'll do the wire wheel again. That's all right. It looks like a little slag on the sides, but 
We'll burn it out of there. Especially on the cap, I'd recommend cutting it. My stinger's old, so it's it doesn't hold a rod real tight. Yep. So if you have any questions or whatever, y'all comment. Oh, Monday we're getting a pool delivered. So I'm getting in that pool and welding a pipe out underwater with a snorkel. So make sure you tune in for that for sure. All right. Let's see if I can still do this. It's been a while. Alloy 20. I can't say that I have. Maybe. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. I forgot to turn it to the soft mode. Um, is that landing long or is it going to go up here? Hmm? Is that landing long or going up What? Is it wide to hop back to the Oh, were you holding the phone upside down? Oh, it was welded uphill. Did you show a picture of those? Um, we're gonna be giving away some stuff. You can, whatever artwork you want to add to it, you can have it put on. We're gonna do five free giveaways at the end. We'll tell you how to get them, and you just send us the artwork, and we'll ship them off to you. If you don't get one for free, you should buy one. It helps support the cameraman's salary, and you know I'm not. I hate to uh, leave him out in this whole thing, so let's let's support Austin and the cameraman. And uh, all right, here do what? I'm doing this off the floor. Now, of course, if we were in a fab shop, I'd be rolling this out if we were really in a tripod. If we were, if I'm welding this in a fab shop or whatever, I'm going to be, if I got a tripod and I'm doing a spool or whatever, I'm not going to be starting at the bottom and coming up. We're going to be, you know, rolling this thing out. I'm just showing, you know, some of the positions that I use to get to the bottom. Um, that way you can kind of see how to position yourself. It's all about getting comfortable. If you don't have an arm pad, I would suggest getting one. Uh, the pipe gets hot and they come in real handy. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start from three o'clock and come up and uh, we'll do this in a weave pass. We should be able to do it in one pass and we'll see though. I'm watching behind the rod, making sure that it fills up. And I'm watching, you know, I'm going back and forth from side to side and just making sure that it's filling up behind me. If you wait too long, it will fall out on you. So you, 
You know, you kind of got to get that medium. Pipe is really hot right now, so I would suggest I tell all the students, you know, weld it all the way out till it's flush, till you're about to cap, wire wheel it, let it, you know, go take a break, water break, bathroom break, and then come back and cap it out. It's no need to let it cool all the way down, but you know, if you let it cool a little bit, that's what you want. It's a little low. Uh, I'd probably, I'm, when, I, when I tie in, I'm just gonna come a little extra over and try to have, tie this in. It's really hot right now. I feel like I'm gonna have to turn it down a little bit more. I'm gonna go just from nine o'clock up. All right, on this side, I'm gonna do stringers. Kind of show you how to do. So come on over here, Austin. I'm gonna start right here and I'm just gonna come up that side and then we'll do it on this side. All right, you ready? Yeah. So, and a lot of times what I tell people is the center of your rod should be the center of that puddle, but you're uh, favoring this side just a little bit, and you just want to barely tie into that wall, the bevel wall, or the outside edge of the bevel. So you're tied in, most of your weld is already on the, you know, the fill pass below it. All right, you ready? Oh, quit shaking the tripod, cameraman. Every welder got his excuses. So I'm not doing as much manipulation right now. I'm just making sure that it ties into that right side. Austin, you're supposed to ask me how I get the slag to stay on the well like that. Probably it's just fell off on the car. Yours, yours always does, doesn't it? All right, so I'm going to watch. Do what? And then on your cap, the first thing I do is wire wheel it. Come over here, Austin. And right here on this edge, I'll take and inspect it all the way up to make sure I'm tied in and above flush all the way around. And then if I am, if I'm not, then I can fix the spot that I, where I missed the wall. If I am tied in, then I can go ahead and start the next pass and come up. How long we been welding for? 
All right. You ready for the next pass? Yes, Dustin. What did I tell him yes for? Um, he said assuming the only reason you're catching that one side is because you're two big cats. Yep. Yeah, we did a weave on this side. It, it was a little low. I'm going to go ahead and flip it around. And we'll try to get to the bottom. I'll tell you what, we'll flip it that way. The amps, I'm running about 95, 90, 95. All right, let me clean this up. All right, come over here. So it was a little low and a little too high heat. I, was, I wasn't filling in all the way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in to this height and I'm gonna continue this two bead cap around. And you tell my fitter, no, I'm not gonna leave it like that. Do what? Now I'm not trying to fill this up for a cap, I'm just leveling this out so everything is basically consistent with the other side. Excuse me. Hand me that file please. spot I'm just gonna flat top it real quick
stick welding? Yeah, yeah, you can stick weld stainless. All right, here we go. Let's see. This left side's on the bottom, so I'm going to keep the same bead sequence there. I'm going to come up this left side. All right, you ready? Hold on. Now this is a little bit full. I'm going to go a little bit faster because I don't have to fill in so much because it's already almost flush. All I'm doing is focusing on this right side edge, making sure that I'm tying in. I'm going to come up the other side. TIG welding. Most of the time we're TIG welding stainless. In the field anyway. see something. I'm going to wire wheel it. All right, we'll do a quick one up this other side and then move around to the other side. I've never done a welding video live except for yesterday and today. And this one's on the, the main page is on, uh, it's public to everybody. So I'm kind of nervous. This ain't my best welding. I mean, it's not too bad. You can get the shot from there up. Don't go any lower than that though. <laughs> All right, how many minutes we at? Anybody got any questions on stick welding? 34 minutes. So we're about to rewind this up. I tell you what, we'll go ahead and wind it up. Um, So we're going to give away five of these 50 cal tungsten holders and you can send in your own artwork and get it customized. And then we're going to give away five of these custom leather TIG handles. Uh, you can also provide your own artwork. So all you got to do is share this video and uh, comment with your, e with your email address and we'll send you the instructions on how to get your giveaways so the first 10 people to share it and then we'll reach out also you know when you share it share it with your email and then we'll be able to see 
Who did it first? A good learning welder, they have those. Um, Esau makes a, a pretty cheap, it's like $500, those little yellow ones. Um, and it can do stick, it has, you know, TIG and stick capabilities and it comes with a pretty good warranty. So uh, most of our guys, we're welding on Lincolns and Millers. Um, so. Do what? When you start up stick welding on the bottom, how do you keep it from building up in the bottom? Do you have gravity? Yeah, you just have to get, you have to weave it wide and move up and let this cool down and then move over to that side and move up while this is cooling down on this side of the bevel, then you can move over and then move up, letting this side cool. If you just try to stay right in the middle and you're not coming up, it's kind of like a U shape on the bottom. Yeah, if you're if you're going too fast too, that's not going to help. You're trying to spread that heat out, so one side has time to cool, and you don't have undercut, and then you're not going to have a big, uh, you know, waterfall coming out of metal on the side of your pipe. So, I guess the biggest things is your starts and stops. Make sure you have a good stinger. Uh, this is giving me a problem tonight, so next time I'm going to have a better one. The rod's loose in here. That's what I get for bringing out the old antique. But So it makes it a little more shaky, a little bit harder to control. And it's the little things, being comfortable, having an arm pad, being able to lean up against that pipe and use both your hands as you're coming up and around. Um, cutting the rod in half for beginners is key. I think that makes a huge difference. Um, and then your temperature and settings. And I tell the guys, you know, at, in class, I tell them if you're wanting to learn how to come off the bottom, come off, start at three o'clock and come up, and then start at four o'clock and come up, five o'clock, come up, six o'clock, come up. Work your way down into the bottom. Don't try to start out where it's hardest for you and then come up to the top. You want to start just gradually working your way down to the bottom. And we'll put two more stringers up here and fill in that last little bit of that pipe um, probably next time I don't know next time we'll probably do some stainless uh, maybe some schedule 10 I mean we can do 308 309 316 whatever y'all want make some you know tell us what you want to see uh, we're going to continue to do giveaways for you guys in hopes that you'll go to the website and spend some more money and it'll help support what we're doing right now obviously we don't have any money coming in because there's no students, no face-to-face -face learning right now. So if anything, anything helps if we're offering some pretty good deals on these custom items. Uh, but we thank you for tuning in, and God bless.